Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some interesting things. First up, Starbucks is going to let customers trace their coffee's provenance from bean to brew using blockchain technology. And at first glance, this looks pretty good, but in the end, it really kind of sucks. Also, the Aave protocol beats Maker and Compound to become the number one in DeFi rankings. And we're going to talk about the total value locked or the TVL, and Aave is beating everything out there. And finally, there's an article by Cointelegraph which talks about the death spiral. And what it's really getting to is to the Bitcoin mining difficulty actually rose by 9%. And this is a um, different aspect that I thought would totally go in the opposite direction. And I can tell you right now, I was completely wrong. Well, before we get into that, let's take a look at the market. And today it is August 25th. It is uh, 6 p.m. Texas time. Just a long day. Just couldn't get uh, going. A lot of other things for the other businesses, but uh, here we are. So right now, let's see what we got. Uh, Bitcoin down pretty good amount, actually 3.4%. And uh, seven and a half almost for seven days. So we're looking at 11,356. That's a that's quite a jarring number. I thought it was going to uh, you know increase just a little bit, maybe hit the 11, 7, 11, 8, But hey, here we are. Ethereum slides below the 400. Really disappointed to see that, but here we are. But uh, hey, good news. Tether retakes the third spot. Ah, nobody cares because Tether's Tether. XRP eh, is just like Tether, pretty much a stable coin, and it's sitting here at around 27 cents, down 3.7. And for the uh, week, down 12%. Who knows when it'll actually go up? Chainlink, uh, also down, down 6%, uh, 14%. And uh, we're getting that territory now uh, where we might see like uh, 13 $12. Who knows? But uh, I got to tell you, Chainlink was up massively, but here we are. Uh, Bitcoin cash down. But the one shining light, the nice grace that is out there, the darling of the cryptocurrency market is Polkadot up 20%. And I got to tell you, uh, it's uh, it was it rose massively. I remember when it when it first came out, it was like 285, then 315, then 346, uh, 347, 425. And now here we are at 546. How high will it go? No, who knows? But uh, I can tell you, it does look kind of promising. However, I will always say the same thing. Don't dump all your money into it right now. Dollar cost average in because you never know. Litecoin, Bitcoin SV still on the top 10. No idea why. And uh, Cosmos up a little bit, but uh, nothing really fantastic. OKB breaks in the top 20. Interesting. And that's pretty much about it. Uh, pretty much read throughout the whole uh, whole cryptocurrency market. Anyhow, um, hopefully this week it turns around, but I do see some more slide action. Uh, I do not think we're going to rise too tremendously. So uh, we'll see. Anyhow, let's break into today's top stories. First up, before I get to the top story about Starbucks, uh, there was a pretty important little message I want to talk to you about, which is the IRS. If you don't know, these letters are going out uh, from the IRS. And this was sent to me by uh, Sheehan uh, Chandraskara. He is a CPA and he's uh, informing me. He goes, look, this is what's going on. Uh, IRS is sending out uh, these letters to people. If you had checked off uh, this box right here, and this is only for US citizens. Uh, if you're in Australia or Canada or, or Europe, this does not apply. This is only for uh, US citizens. If you had um, actually invested in a cryptocurrency, which if you're watching this channel, pretty good chance you did in 2019. Uh, if you checked off no um, and you went through a Coinbase, a Kraken, a Gemini, a Binance, any kind of exchange where you had to do some type of AML or KYC where you uploaded your information, chances are the government knows. So uh, you might be getting a letter and uh, just talk to your CPA about that. That's all I'm going to say. So real quick, this was a letter that uh, was sent on August 14, 2020. So you know it's recent. And uh, this is exactly from the IRS. And it says, why we're writing to you, which is never good when you get this from the IRS, but they state here, we have in information that you have or had one or more accounts containing virtual currency, they but may not have properly reported your transactions involving virtual currency, which include cryptocurrency and not crypto virtual currencies. What you need to do after the reviewing the information, if you believe you didn't accurately report your virtual currency transactions on a federal income tax return, you should file amended returns or delinquent returns if you didn't file a return. Da, 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 da. So again, make sure you talk to your CPA. I am just the messenger. Do not shoot me. And this is just the information that I got. If you are looking to drastically minimize your taxes, in the description of every one of my videos, there is a link. It's going to look like this. And it's going to link you to a video that I just did a couple days ago, which talks about how to drastically or colossally actually minimize your taxes using iTrust Capital. 
click and watch that video and go forward from there. But uh, just a warning for the day, let's move on to top story. So first up, Starbucks let customers trace their coffee's providence from bean to brew. When I first saw this, I'm like, great, looks like VeChain is taking names and kicking ass, whatever you want to call. But uh, I got to tell you, that's not the case. So here it all is in a nutshell. Starbucks, the biggest coffee shop chain in the world, now allows its customers to trace the origins of its coffee using Microsoft's blockchain solution. Let me say it again, Microsoft's blockchain solution. What a bummer. You know, you 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 come into the space and you invest into different projects that you think are going to be good. And what do these, uh, you know, huge conglomerates do? Uh, huge corporations, they just team up together. So now they got Microsoft Blockchain Solution, which uses Azure, I believe. Uh, and that is what is going on. But what's going to what's happening here is that customers will be able to scan codes on the bags of coffee they purchase to discover their origins. So this is kind of a bummer, but you got to understand, uh, these big corporations, they're going to get in where they fit in. Um, and what's going to happen is that, you know, they're going to say, hey, we can offer blockchain, we can offer blockchain. But here's the thing. They are, all these huge corporations, uh, they are not very nimble. They have to, they have multiple layers of management. They have to go through a lot of hoops and uh, just to get, in just to land one account. So these types of things, I'm like, okay, well, that sucks. I kind of hoping that they would go another route. But of course, unfortunately, they went for Microsoft. But I truly believe if you just look at history and business, I mean, just take a look at Blockbuster. They tried to pivot on a dime when they found out that people were streaming services. And actually, Netflix came to them and said, hey, you want to buy us? And like, no, we don't want that because we're Blockbuster and we're awesome and we'll always crush you. And uh, we know what happened there. But uh, when you're new and you're young and you can kind of do these things because you don't have uh, these, these huge layers of management, you can get out there and you can really change the world. Uh, so I don't see this as uh, being a pop-off for every type of thing. I think Microsoft, I think IBM, they will get in for these different places but i do not see them be the majority because they are just so darn big and they can't be like the smaller different types of blockchain projects that are out there the ones that you and i invest in so that's what we have let's move on next up a protocol beats maker and compound to become number one in b5 rankings and i gotta tell you uh ave has been on quite the tear so this is talking about the total value locked or tvl and best decentralized finance are being rocked by ave it's a lending protocol that has now taken MakerDAO's mantle as the most popular destination for Ethereum-based assets. And this is one of the reasons why uh, I'm also very bullish on Ethereum, because everything's built on it. So um, I've got uh, a good amount of Ethereum, I will just say that, and uh, I can only see it doing very well. But after reading this article, I think I'm going to have to take a look at Ave a little more closely. Anyhow, according to data from DeFi Pulse, Ave or Ave, however you want to say it, holds 1.4 billion in assets as of press time, slightly ed edging out Maker's 1.4 billion. And for the longest time, Maker was uh, the king uh, of the hill. Uh, here we are, already overtaken, but that's how things move in cryptocurrency. Compound, another one that was the darling of cryptocurrency and now has fallen to fifth place, overtaken by Yearn and Curve, or Yearn and Curve. Ave offers a wide range of assets for borrowing and depositing with various stable coins like Tether, True USD, USD Coin, accounting for the majority of its value locked. The protocol's value locked measurement thus appears to be partially dependent on the price of its token. This is the big thing. You have to understand. When they put out these native tokens, it seems like half of it comes from the native token itself, and the other half is kind of like the lending platform when they talk about USDT, USD coin, uh, TUSD. So it's kind of interesting how that all works, but we'll get into that right now. However, liquidity mining incentives, like on Compound or Curve, resulted in the yield farming phenomenon, which inflates TVL in a positive feedback loop with token prices. I got to tell you, I am not a fan of this. Um, I just think it's creating something from nothing, and um, I don't see the value of it at all. I just think it's people chasing people chasing you know, money, and uh, I don't see the value of it. I am a big believer in putting my money into something that can actually create value, not just a, a never-ending loop of money just coming in. I mean, what are you actually doing? I see decentralized finance as uh, the big motivator or the big mover with small businesses like myself, because if I can get uh, loans against my cryptocurrency, fantastic. That means I don't have to sell my cryptocurrency as it actually you know, gains in value over the six months, 12 months, two years, five years, or 10 years, or whatever else it is for the loan I'm going to take out. I can leave it in there 
I can get cash, I can pay for different types of units or any kind of overhead that I have or uh, mortgages or different parts for the land. Uh, I can do a lot of different things with that money and cryptocurrency gonna sit there. For small businesses, I'm telling you right now, DeFi will be big once the small businesses just figure it out. Um, uh, because if you've ever gone through a bank, uh, hint, hint, banks suck and it's very hard to get a loan. So I am big on DeFi for small businesses and you know for the private loan as well. Anyhow, finishing up here, some researchers have highlighted that the market's overall TVL is prone to double counting. For example, uh, any DAI liquidity on a lending platform like uh, Aave, Aave, how do you say it, is a second counting of the original assets supplied as collateral to maker to mint the stable coin. Now, all, of, all these issues have led to uh, some to propose alternative methods of measuring the success of DeFi. The metric still remains the most quoted in the industry, so I don't understand that. But yeah, I mean, look, DeFi is going to be big uh, regardless. Uh, I don't know however you want to count it, if you want to double count or triple count or <laughs> however you want to do it, it's going to be big, but I think it has its place uh, for the right uh, individual and the right businesses. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section of how you see DeFi actually uh, increasing the value uh, going forward over the next 5, 10, 30 years. All right, that's it. But there's one thing I want to do. I want to take a look at the actual website. This is uh, app dot uh, ave a a v e or ave dot com and when you go here you can um, you can connect your wallet uh, right away so if you got a if you got a ledger like I do you can click on that but if you use another the the brave browser uh, you can set up your uh, ethereum based wallet right in the brave browser which is pretty cool so all you got to do is you can't see it but in the top left hand corner if you're using the brave browser just click on brave and then you'll click on preferences and then right here on the top, on the top right there, it'll say crypto wallets. And then you put in your password and there it is. Wham, look at that. 0.15 ETH, I'm loaded. Then I got uh, Celsius, 35.18. And you can do this, uh, you just set it up right here and it'll walk through the whole thing. So it's pretty cool, you can just do this and then just you know pay for things uh, as you're using the Brave browser and instead of using your ledger or any kind of hot wallet. So it's right there. But just be aware, I don't keep a lot of money uh, on these wallets. These are kind of like uh, just incidental type of things that I wanna do and just test out. So just a little bit and that's okay. And there's your uh, Ethereum based wallet, is copy to clipboard. And, off you go. That is your public key. So anybody can take a look at that. Anyhow, jumping back, uh, let's, it says star crypto wallets and reload. Let's do that. And there it is, browser wallet. Interesting. And then welcome back. You do this again. And I got a couple here. We'll use the one that actually has money in it. Oops. I ah, can select them all. I don't want to. Next. All right. And then connect to. They're connecting. And boom, there we are. So here's where we can get in and we can start to play. We can do all these different things with DeFi. Let's see what they got. So they got that. Ethereum, ETHLAN. That chain link, you know, a lot of different things here. This is nice. And then you got the deposit APY, the percentage yield, and then the borrower. So this is what the borrower is going to pay. This is on a 30 day average, 6.24. If they're using true USD, not too bad, 1.9, 2.15. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that for sure. Uh, this is where it gets a little crazy. Basic attention token, 91%. So again, if you want to do something like that, go right ahead, take a look at uh, uh, Aave or Aave. Me personally, I just use Celsius. Uh, that's my one-two punch. I use uh, Voyager to buy cryptocurrency digital assets, and then I use Celsius to transfer it over there. And then uh, I get interest on all the different uh, cryptocurrencies that I have. And uh, I've actually taken a loan out, and it's very easy. So, I mean, I like to do that. It just makes sense to me. So if you want to take a look at all the different uh, wallets and exchanges that I recommend, there's going to be a link in the description. It's going to look like this. And it goes every, it goes over everything from, from Coinbase to Kraken to Gemini to Atomic Wallet to Voyager to Celsius to eToro. Do not recommend them. Crypto.com. Everything you think of are some of the big names out there. I've used them all and I give you recommendations and I give you the uh, fees and the interest and all that stuff. So go ahead and take a look at that. So last, this is uh, this caught my attention. This is from Coin Telegraph. It says, "What death spiral? Bitcoin mining difficulty rises by nine percent." Says having. So before the having, uh, which was uh, around May May eleventh, I had thought that there was going to be a massive capitulation of all the Bitcoin miners, and they were going to shut down their rigs because instead of actually getting 12 and a half Bitcoin, they were only going to get 6.25 for every block that was mined, and the um, uh, price of the electricity had gone up. 
And I just thought, well, if that's the case, then these Bitcoin miners are going to say, well, I can't make that much money uh, because, you know, everything's cut in half. I'm doing the same amount of work, but I get in half the pay. So I'm just going to shut off. But uh, I was wrong. <laughs> I was just just uh, didn't hit that one. But that's a good thing. Right. So a rising hash rate is a positive for Bitcoin. So the thing about uh, a hash rates, this is the great thing about the Bitcoin network. It keeps everything in equilibrium. So the more mining rigs that are out there, the more that are you know chunking along, mining those blocks, uh, the more they have, the higher the hash rate actually is, and the more difficult it is. And then inversely, uh, if miners would have shut everything down, or at least half of them would have shut down, then the difficulty would have dropped dramatically, and uh, it would have been easier for all the ones that were left on. I always thought that uh, the bigger corporations, the big mining pools, would just dominate and all the uh, small guys would be uh, you know, pushed out. But it did not happen. And according to data from Glassnode, the mining difficulty of Bitcoin actually increased by 3.6% on August 24th is and is now at an all-time high. So that is good for the network. So I can go over the rest of it. It goes through some data and some different points, but it's pretty boring. Um, the only thing that really I got out of this is that this is a good thing for Bitcoin because, I mean, it is it is good to have competition in a market. And if you're going to have, you know, just these huge mining pools just swallow up everybody, that's not great. Now, it's going to happen anyhow at some point. Let's just be honest, because, I mean, you've got these uh, big, huge mining pools in uh, in China, and that's just the way it is. And then you've got uh, there's some in actually layer one, which is in central or southwest. Texas um, and uh, that is the one that is uh, being financed by Peter Thiel and that one's supposed to be enormous there's also some other uh, mining operations in Texas as well uh, because the electricity is so cheap so uh, I'd, I'd like to see that I'd like to see more come out I'd like to see more smaller operations get into the game but yeah uh, you know how it goes uh, sometimes you just gotta get uh, the bigger players dominate. Okay, and that's it for today's uh, top stories. But before we take off, I just want to say thanks to everybody who has signed up at uh, for Digital Asset News. There is a Join Now button at the very bottom right. Uh, just so you know, you don't get anything special. It's just like a tip. It's like a buck ninety nine, and uh, I just give random shout outs. So random shout outs to Tommy Maples, Jeremy Schwartz, Sam Vasquez, and Crow twenty four seven. We've also got Patrick Mai, Fulja, either Black, Chuck C. Uh, Azriel's pack <laughs> passage, Barry Belasco, Bill Bajerki, Sam Rossman, Igor Pustin. That's a good one. And Mo, Mo Zanel. So uh, thanks everybody. Really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Don't know. Uh, YouTube has control of those. And um, also, they also have control over all the ads you saw. So if you saw a scam ad, not my fault. Uh, don't shoot the messenger. Actually, go talk to YouTube. They'd love to hear from you. And uh, that's it. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.